Kia ora. Good to see us all this morning on, what day is it today? Yes, of course, it's Sunday. Pardon? Father's Day. What is it? St. Patrick's Day. It's good. And as I've told a number of people, when you have a grandfather, who I never got to meet, unfortunately, whose name was Michael Patrick O'Connor, um, it's an important day. So I got up this morning, and I didn't put my microphone on here. Sorry. Okay, hopefully we can hear me a little bit better. You may have rather preferred my microphone stay in, in the pocket. Anyway, so like I was saying, um, got up this morning and I went, let's wear the shirt that I wear once a year, my Irish football shirt. Went to get it and went, hmm, it hasn't been worn for a year. <laughs> and it was washed, but now it needs to be washed again, because <laughs> so put that to one side. So I thought, how can I, how can I start... Um, before we get into the important stuff, how can I start? I have an Irish passport. It expired years ago, even though I have, well, I, uh, I have visited Ireland once. So I thought we would start with what everyone did when I was young, and I don't know why, a nice Irish joke. So and do we have anybody who's Irish? No? Good. That means I won't offend you. Good. <laughs> I... I mean, so I can offend myself. So this is an oldie, an oldie but a goodie. I'm sure we remember this one. So there were three gentlemen, three gentlemen, and surprise, surprise, what was it? English, Irish, and Scottish. Three, three gentlemen, and uh, they crash and end up on a um, deserted island, and they're wandering around, and they're starving, and, and uh, they come across um, a lamp, they rub the lamp, and poof, out pops a genie. This is a true story. Um, out pops the genie, and the genie goes, I will give you three wishes. And they look at each other and go, there's three of us, one wish each. And so the Englishman goes, you know, I absolutely love football. I won't say which team he supported, because that will offend somebody, I'm sure. I love football. And, you know, what I would love, what I would really love is to be at home with my family watching my team in the FA Cup final. Poof! He disappeared, ends up at home in a comfy chair with his family watching football. And, uh, and the, Scotman, the Scottish guy goes, you know, I love haggis. He goes, I would love to be seated at home around a roaring fire, having some haggis. Boop! Disappeared. He's at home, seated with his family, having some haggis. And the Irishman goes, I miss my friends. I wish they were here. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. It has nothing to do with what we're doing, but it's always good to have some fun, have some fun and enjoyment. And, um, yeah, thinking of those that are going to Easter camp, you know, there won't be that, those sorts of silly Irish jokes, I'm sure, um, but hopefully they will have a lot of enjoyment and, and be able to learn more about even things that they know, um, particularly around this Easter period. But this morning, obviously, we're continuing on with our, our series on Meals with Jesus. And I'm just going to read the passage, which a lot of us will know and will have heard it many, many times. Uh, so, we're reading from Luke 19, first 10 verses. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, 
he said, Come down. I must be a guest in your house today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. If I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Okay, that's the passage that a lot of us have heard or read, um, and many would have heard some very detailed sermons, I'm sure. I want to look at three key figures in this narrative and see how their responses relate to other responses that we may have seen in the Bible, including some we may have explored while we've been on this Meals with Jesus series. Then I want to explore what our, our responses could be today, what that could mean for you and I for Eastview, and finally, finish with an idea or a thought that I think is a, a pretty beautiful counter-cultural um, example that hopefully you will see stands in contrast to one of the responses that we're going to look at. So that's what we're going to do this morning. It's not going to be long either. But let's start with Zacchaeus. We start with Zacchaeus. And what do we know about Zacchaeus? Well, the first thing we heard was Zacchaeus was a little man. Now, while I was researching this, um, I came across someone who said that some archaeologists had looked up, uh, had found some bones and various things, and they'd made an assumption. I'd never heard this before, so... I'm not 100% sure, but this is what this person reported, that people around Zacchaeus' time, the average height for a male was around about... Anybody take a guess? Yeah, between about 5 foot 1 and 5 foot 5 or something like that. So um, not very tall. So if Zacchaeus was a little man and the average is between five foot one and five foot five, then he was short. I don't know how short he was, but he was little. So he, today, he would be very little. But also, what else do we know about him? We know that he was a tax collector. We may remember some of what I'm just about to repeat, in a way, because... We looked at this when we looked at Jesus calling Levi, who was also a tax collector. For just like Levi, Zacchaeus, being a tax collector, was not that popular. You know, the people of the time didn't really like tax collectors. They were considered traitors in many cases. And yet, just like with Jesus, uh, sorry, just like with Levi, when Jesus had a meal with him, Jesus interacts with Zacchaeus here over a meal. These tax collectors were outsiders, and yet, once again, Jesus is having meals with outsiders. But I want to contrast Zacchaeus not to Levi, to someone else. I want to contrast Zacchaeus to the rich young ruler in another passage in the Bible. Uh, he's, called, he's called the rich young ruler in Matthew, not in, in Luke. But the rich young ruler and Zacchaeus, what, what similarities and what differences do they have? First of all, both of them were rich. 
nice and easy. Rich young ruler, would be pretty silly if he wasn't rich. Um, and Zacchaeus, we're told in that passage, was rich. They were both rulers in a way. I don't know much about the rich young ruler, apart from his title, being called a rich young ruler. And Zacchaeus is in a position being a ruler over a number of other tax collectors. So this is where things are a little bit interesting. Because the rich young ruler, when Jesus and him are talking, Jesus asks him, have you done this? And he says, yes, I have kept the commandments. Zacchaeus is stated as a sinner, and he acknowledges that. Quite different. One, you could say, is good, acceptable, you know, the sort of person that you'd be happy to have at home, and the other person, mm, not so much. But after their interactions with Jesus, one of them leaves away sad, and the other is excited and full of joy. Very different responses that these two people have. You see, Zacchaeus, he wanted to see Jesus. Rich young ruler wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And he did something, like we've heard before, that was not, again, not that common. Zacchaeus ran ahead. Running wasn't a common thing. We didn't have people running marathons that we know of in the Bible, or half marathons. It was not considered you know, a polite thing to do. But Zacchaeus, because he was a bit on the outside, runs away to climb up to a tree so he can get a better view. He wanted to see this person, Jesus, that he probably heard about. May not have been a dignified thing to do, but he didn't really care. Ironically, Zacchaeus' name means the Lord is pure and innocent. And I think we can see through the passage that he knows he hasn't been living up to that name. He hasn't been pure and innocent. What else do we have in the test? text? Well, there's two things here. What we have in the text and what we don't have in the text, which I find interesting. I find actually what we don't have perhaps even more interesting than what we do. You see, Jesus, as the second person that we have in this text, interacts with Zacchaeus. And we have, yes, that Zacchaeus is looking for Jesus, but we actually have Jesus seeking Zacchaeus. He says, come down, I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to go to your place. Now, when I was young, I had a good friend who lived 20 houses down the road from me. And my kids don't know how to do this, and that is use a telephone. They text, but they don't know how to use a telephone. This was regular occurrence of my telephone call. Carl, what are you doing? Nothing. Good, I'll see you in two minutes. That was my phone call. Two minutes later, I'd walk down and I'd be into his house, knock on the door and just walk in because he was a good friend of mine, we just walked in, and then we'd hang around. I didn't know what he was doing, and I just assumed that he wanted to see me, because I wanted to see him, and we would go out and play cricket or play soccer or whatever it was. That's what I would do. However, I don't do that now. I don't ring up someone and I go, hey, what are you doing? I'm coming to your house. Okay. Jesus says, I'm coming to your house today. Who's ever thought, that sounds a bit rude. <laughs> you don't just invite yourself into somebody else's house. You know, as a kid, you can get away with it maybe, but as an adult, well, I don't know. Again, when I looked at this, I found out 
actually, that's a fairly common thing. If you want to engage with people at that time, particularly in that part of the world, people would do it all the time. I want to spend time with you, and so I'm going to come to your house. And they would just do it. So it was a cultural thing that perhaps I don't understand. But more so, he's Jesus, and he's going to spend time with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus. Yes, I'm happy for you to come to my house. Zacchaeus responds to Jesus, and then he responds to the community, which we'll look at again. And Jesus restores Zacchaeus into the community, the family of God. I wonder if we actually grasp this. You know, like I said, I wanted to spend time with my friend. I'd ring him up and then I'd go to his house. Nowadays, people might spend hours waiting in line to get, well, yeah, they spend a lot of time on the computer waiting to get a ticket to this famous concert that they want to go, or they're going to a a football match, and they spend a fair amount of time waiting in line to get into the football match so that they can see their favourite soccer players or favourite team or, or whatever the case may be. You spend a lot of time, hours sometimes, waiting to see that famous singer, the movie star. Or what about people that spend hours to get the right position so that maybe the king drives past and waves, and they go, oh yes, I got to see the king. Here, here we have the creator of the world doing something a bit different, saying, I'm coming to your house. He says to Zacchaeus, I'm going to spend time with you. He said the same in many ways we heard last week to Mary and Martha. And he says the same later on if we were to read like even in Revelation, that passage we, we know about, you know, I stand at the door and knock. He's talking to the church at Laodicea saying, I want to come in and spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you and I. So we have Zacchaeus and Jesus Obviously. Then the third person in this passage that I want to look at. I'm coming back to that last bit in a minute. The third person is who? Well, the third person isn't really a person. It said in verse 7, but the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Listen to the words we read a few weeks ago in Luke 5, when Jesus called Levi another tax collector. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious law grumbled, complained bitterly to Jesus. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Pharisees and religious leaders. And like Jono gave that great example a few weeks ago that sometimes we, we can sort of put the Pharisees and go, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, look at them. Oh, please, I'm pleased not, I'm not them. Here, it doesn't say the Pharisees and religious leaders, although it could very well have included them. It says the people. The people were grumbling. The Pharisees grumbled. But that word grumbling that they use there is the same word that was used for the people of God when they'd got out of Egypt, crossed over, miraculously saved from slavery, and then they start grumbling about God. Here we are, the same thing. They're grumbling about God. For those of you that have been doing these sorts of things in your small groups and discussing the passages, 
and the questions. One, one question that we often have written is, if you could place yourself into the story, who would you be and how would you react and why? If I'm honest, in this story, I think I would have been one of the people. I would have been grumbling, going, why is Jesus talking to Zacchaeus? You know, he's busy. He could be talking to lots of people. Why is he giving up his time to, to talk to Zacchaeus? I think I would likely have been part of the people. I would likely have seen Zacchaeus as a traitor, a sinner. Not Zacchaeus, the person whom God loves and came to seek and save. But if we look back at this text, we will see something that's not written in those words that we read earlier. We don't have Zacchaeus actually asking Jesus to come to his house. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but he didn't say, Jesus, come to my house. I think he was, if I was Zacchaeus, I'd be, well, I can't ask him that. I know he wouldn't come and spend time with me. Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. We also have Jesus telling Zacchaeus, we don't have, this is what I'm saying, we don't have Jesus saying to Zacchaeus, you have to do this, 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 before I'll come to your house. Huh? Most of us, if we're honest, we sometimes think, you know, oh, well, maybe if I do this, 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 if the person does that, then they're acceptable. And unfortunately, that can happen in Christian communities. Oh, you've got to do this, 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 this before you can become part. Jesus didn't say that. He said, I'm coming to your house. But obviously, it had a huge impact on Zacchaeus. Too often, if I'm bold enough to say this, too often we may see a thief, a homeless person, a person living a dangerous lifestyle as just that, a thief, a homeless person, a person living a dangerous lifestyle. We don't see them as a person with a name who Jesus loves and wants to spend time with. Jesus called Zacchaeus by name. He didn't say, oi, tax collector, come down here. He said, Zacchaeus, I want to spend time with you. I have come, Jesus said, to seek and save. So what is Zacchaeus' response? We don't know. In this passage, we don't actually have a lot of words. There's no big interaction that we can see. Oh, you know, Jesus said this, da-da-da-da-da. Zacchaeus went so on and so forth. But Zacchaeus responds. He responds even while people... See, we don't have people being happy that Jesus is reaching out to Zacchaeus. But he responds. Zacchaeus responds. And he responds in a great way. If we look back up here. He is excited, full of joy. And he says, I will give half my wealth to the poor, which was a lot because he was rich. And if I've cheated people in any way, I'll give four times the amount. Now, in the Old Testament, if you go way back and look at things, there was sort of a, if you cheat and you're to give back, you mean to give back 20% on top of what you, you took. He's giving back significantly more because his life had been changed. 
and his responses in a way, a love for God and a love for others to give to those that are in need. Jesus turned to the grumbling people and said, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. What has Jesus done? He has brought Zacchaeus back into community. Like Levi, the woman at Simon's house, and so many more, Jesus takes those who have been excluded, the outsider, and welcomes them. He restores them into community and into the family of God. Like Zacchaeus, they and we can be true sons and daughters of Abraham. I wonder what our response could be. Could it be to welcome others, to value everyone, no matter what their age or position, to help each other grow and to reach out to others? Or, as I've been saying, to be committed to Christ and to community. The communities that we engage with and the community around here. I came across this quote. It's changed a little bit. I came across this quote which I think helps us look a little bit more at Zacchaeus and what happened. So the real stature of a person is measured not in metres or feet and inches, but in how low you bow, how low you humble yourself, in this measurement, Zacchaeus was a man of great stature. Are we? How low you bow and humble yourself. He was willing to climb up a tree. He was willing to run. He was willing to give away half he had. He was willing to give away more to those that he had cheated because he knew what he had gained in a relationship with God, was far more than anything else. Next week, we're going to finish our series on Meals with Jesus, and we are going to have a meal, but it is not a meal that you can decide you can skip breakfast for, because it's only a taster. A okay? little bit of lamb, a little bit of egg, a little bit of other things, um, some bread. We'll have gluten-free uh, bread be set up for us to, to think about and to hopefully engage. There's some herbs and, and various things. A little bit of a taster of what Passover would be like. But one of the things that it reminds me of is that just like Zacchaeus, who welcomed people, welcomed Jesus to come, like we've been looking at for the last five weeks, to get around a table and have meals together. And I'm going to enjoy spending meals, a meal with all of you. But maybe, maybe this week, next week, over the holidays, maybe at Easter camps or wherever you are, um, over the next few weeks, Maybe one of the things we should also be thinking about is who is at our table? Who else might want to be welcomed at our table that we could spend time with? And what stature do we have? Let me pray and then we're going to have some songs to close. Father, I thank you for this story, this example of a man who was on the outside who you welcomed. I thank you that you are the God who welcomes us all. You came, you died, and as we've been reminded again, and we will be reminded over this Easter, 
you rose again. And in doing that, you gave all of us the opportunity to be welcomed back into the family of God. And so for those of us that do know you, we thank you. For those of us that don't know you, we pray that, I pray that we will take time to think about you and perhaps be like Zacchaeus because we might look for you, but you are standing at the door knocking. You are seeking us out. You are the one that is calling us by name saying that, hey, I'm coming to your house. Let me in. Be with us and help us. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen.